Let's just start. Hi, Book Warriors. We are having cocktail hour. Woohoo! <laughs> well, we're going to have cocktail hour. We're going to, yeah, we're getting ready to have cocktail hour. Can you see all of our alcohol right there? And this is only part of it. Yeah. There's more here. Yeah. Big, big bottle of rum here. <laughs> and we're here with Amy Pershing because it is release day. Woo! Yay! Good to die for. Congratulations on your book birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so we are going to chat about your book. And later you're going to do a little reading. And we're going to talk about some holiday traditions. And we're going to make a couple of cocktails. But I first have a question before we get started. I, I'm curious about the title of your book, An Eggnog to Die For. So how did you all come up with that one? Oh, um, well, you know, it's the book actually does revolve around the search for the best possible eggnog recipe. Um, so, and, and I think that other people who are on this call m might have read the first book as well. But uh, is, is that a dog? Yeah. <laughs> it's That's her pug. He's coming. Oh. Her, her top. Y'all have to see her top. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yay. Pug. This is the shirt that my friend yeah, Cuba you need, gave me. You need to hold your sleeve up so they can Hi, see. Hi, <laughs> What a doll baby. <laughs> see? Isn't, that, isn't that cute? Oh, where did she go? Oh, no. Did we disconnect her? Yeah. Uh-oh. All right. Well, hang on. She'll be back. I'm sure. Mine just has candy canes. I'm not quite as <laughs> quite as cute. You're, uh -oh. you're, yeah, you're very adorable. But I have actually. I have a hat I stole from my daughter's closet. With the wires. <laughs> <sticking up there. laughs> I know. I need to fix that. <laughs> and we even did our nails today. We did. Look at our nails. Ooh. She's got sparkles, and I've got red and green. Um, we did this for you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, we don't know what happened to Amy, and she's she's uh -oh. leaving us. Her eggnog killed her. <laughs> <laughs> she, it really worked. Really. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Well, do you want to talk about your holiday traditions while we're waiting for her to join us? Oh, on? sure. Oh, there she is. I see. Yes, oh, yeah. you're back. <laughs> we were going to fill in the tie with some line dancing. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. So anyway, <laughs> um, it's Christmas time, obviously, in the mm -hmm. book. And uh, Sam has decided that she's going to have her friends and family all join her for uh, Christmas Eve for her, she wants to honor her nonna, her, her Italian grandmother, with a feast of the five fishes. Now, actually, traditionally, it's a feast of the seven fishes, and in some parts of Italy, it's the feast of the 12 fishes, but Sam's feeling is Christmas is tough enough, you know, <laughs> it, may, it should be easier than that. So she's going to do a feast of the five fishes. Um, and everybody has an opinion about, you know, what she should have and what she should make. But the real debate is over what kind of eggnog she should make. Hmm. Uh, and she manages to get herself into a bit of a spot of bother because she goes to a very fancy sort of restaurant craft cocktail bar uh, and she discovers the best eggnog recipe and she figures this, if she can get the, re the the world's best eggnog if she can get the recipe from the hot bartender uh then she doesn't have to make a decision as to which one of her various family or friends recipes is the best so what she does is she suggests that they do a that she and her friend jenny um do a video uh of this hot bartender making these craft cocktails. And if he's happy with it, they'll do it as a Cape Cod foodie video. And he'll be so happy with it that he'll give her the recipe um, for an eggnog to die for. Oh. Uh, and uh, as it turns out, it probably wasn't the world's best idea because while she's there, she manages to stumble over a dead Santa Claus Oh, I know, I know. Well, he's not a very nice. <laughs> it's not the real Santa Claus. Oh, that no, is okay. It's the real Santa Claus. We don't do that. No, 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 no. First rule. Well, second rule of cozy mysteries: don't hurt the animal and don't kill the real Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, 
But that's that's how it all sort of came to be, uh, is that Sam really wanted an eggnog to die for, and it just turned out to be a, a bad choice of words. <laughs> well, you know, that's so funny because, um, you know, kind of your theme there about there, there's politics involved in holidays, like whose stuffing recipe? That's what you usually hear. Is like, oh, oh, are you going to make the oyster stuffing this year? Is no, it going to be the regular it's stuffing? always the cornbread <laughs> stuffing. Just oh. the same. <laughs> I mean, it's not Thanksgiving without cornbread. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes it's like, you know, whose house is it going to be at? Who gets to host? And what time is it going to be? And who makes the rules? And who decides? And it's I like, no. And who brings what? And what's and everybody has to have at least one favorite, you know? Yeah. So, you know, is it going to be mashed potatoes or is it going to be mashed sweet potatoes? Yeah, we already cleared this up. It's cornbread stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we having this conversation now? <laughs> so yeah, it's you know, and and Christmas. I Thanksgiving is very tricky that way. I think because people really want their favorite food and they really want their Thanksgiving that way. Christmas, I found well, certainly in my mother's household, my parents' household, she had five kids, and we had like a routine because I think it was the only way of you know, a woman with five kids could stay sane, you know? She yes, had, my kids. Well, there you go. Am I right? <laughs> it's like, if you don't know exactly what's coming in the next 15 minutes, it's chaos, you know? Absolute chaos. So, uh, God, I don't know how you do it with five kids. It was chaos in my house with two. <laughs> the chaos is fun, though, too, don't you think? I mean, like, oh. I when there's a dog running through and a cat walking across something and the kids, you know, yelling and screaming. And the team I know, on, I know. And truthfully, no matter way. what she did, it always was chaos. I love it. It's, yeah. I just love to have the house full of... Yeah. Oh, yeah the and, you know, and the traditions do mean a lot to people and they mean an awful lot to kids, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and then you find that the ones that you grew up with are so important to you that you hand them down to, you know, your kids as well. And it's, mm -hmm. I don't know, for me, it's Christmas is everything about it is a joy. I just love it. Absolutely love it. I actually prefer Thanksgiving of the two. Christmas yeah. seems to be more hectic, I think. And it, and it was always just a little more, you know, w when the kids were little, we lived in California and all our family was in Texas and it was just so exhausting. Yeah. Whereas Thanksgiving, we would stay home more. And, and I just have these great memories of my son would go on Thanksgiving morning. He would go and he would get every pillow, every blanket, every couch cushion, every chair cushion in the house. And he would make these nests so that we could all lay on the floor in this nest. And the nest <laughs> would end up being about this high. Whoa, and we'd all so lay cute. down there in our pajamas and watch the parade and like eat cereal or donuts or something, you know. Absolutely. That parade, it's, you're, you're right. I'd forgotten all about watching the parade. The parade yeah. was so, so great. And the thing about Thanksgiving is it's, it's manageable. It's one day, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Christmas goes on for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like like Christmas a Christmas and you've got a wrap and you've got to yeah. clean up and you have like two different meals yeah. to make. And, oh, it's just fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun good. too. But yeah, thanks, Thanksgiving, I think I actually have enjoyed more, more Thanksgivings than I have. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, you know, I was, I was born in Puerto Rico. And lived there I was too. Was, was your dad in the Air Force? No, no, he was. He, he worked for a bank. He worked oh, okay. for a bank, um, and they sent him down there for work. And oh, yeah. I and three, two of my three brothers uh, were born there. And so, how long did you live there? Two months. <laughs> Just long enough to be born for your mom long to enough be to get there. Tan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was born on the Air Force Base. That's no longer an Air Force Base. It's we were yeah. in Alpadilla, apparently. So I've been told. <laughs> well, we were in San Juan, and so I grew up with a completely different uh, early Christmas tradition oh. because Christmas Day is not the day for giving presents, or it wasn't when I was a child. It was Epiphany. It was January 6th. Oh, right, yeah. When the three kings finally arrived with their presents for the baby. Um, and so it was very exciting because the night before, we each got a uh, shoebox or a box of some sort. And we had to go out and we had to pull up grass and fill our boxes with grass so that the camels would have something to eat. Uh -huh, kind of like Easter grass. And we do <laughs> Exactly. 
And we took this so seriously. I thought we were the only ones responsible for feeding the camels. You know, so <laughs> yeah, like Santa and the cookies, like yeah, exactly. I mean, gotta have was, the cookies. This was a big deal, and it was our job. You know? <laughs> um, That's cool. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the, Did feast, you hear that? the, the camels. Oh, the camels feeding the camels. Oh know? no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We had to gather grass so that the camels would have something to eat. They would come at night. They would eat, and you know what? We'd wake up the next morning, and the grass was gone. So obviously. <laughs> The camels yeah. got there. We are um, right here from the three kings. It's very exciting. That's cool. Yeah, no, we always well, we just did Christmas on Christmas, not on Epiphany, but <laughs> we did right here, <laughs> which was that's that's uh, a tradition of our kids still. Yeah, my kid's kindergarten teacher did some kind of reindeer food where she had like oatmeal and glitter. Yep, that's <laughs> you know, it. Probably, that's probably, probably is not good for your digestion. I'm not the recipe there. <laughs> the reindeer. But that's another reason why I wanted to do this um, this coquito drink because it's it's a Puerto Rican eggnog. Oh, um, okay. sounds like a contradiction in terms, but it is Puerto Rican eggnog. Cool, coconut, coconut eggnog. Well, I'm excited by that now. Get back in touch with my roots. There we go. <laughs> exactly, it's a nice root to get in touch with. <laughs> So what were some of your family's traditions? You said making the, these things, you've got that. What about you? Did y'all have any family traditions growing up or do you have some now? I know you're- Yeah, you're... Our, our big tradition now is the tamaladas. My husband is Mexican American and um, he grew up with a tamale celebration, making tamales at Christmas. And so we've taken oh, yeah, that on and That's, it. that's yeah. our sort of annual tradition and it's everybody's favorite day really. And it's, it's a friend thing, which- Diane is never around for. I know, maybe <laughs> this year. Do it sometime when I'm around this year. <laughs> the twenty second. So I don't know. You'll be up in each. Oh, month. I will be. Yeah, I think. But uh, we, it's a big party, so everybody comes to make tamales, and then we eat the sole and eat tamales and eat other stuff and play games or whatever, and um, and then everybody goes home with a big bag or two of tamales. So she saved me some last year, even though I didn't get to make it. And they were the best tamales I've ever had. They, they were actually, you know, usually tamales have a, a little bit of grit to them and they were not gritty. They were so moist. Oh my God. So they're going to save me some this year if I can't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're the ones that are wrapped in, um, in corn husk. leaves. No, we do corn husks. Oh, oh, corn husk, of course. Yeah. I think it's maybe regional. Um, and, and I think there's something that's. Um, like Ecuadorian, I think it uses banana leaves, and I don't know, maybe Puerto Rican, or I don't know, but yeah, in Mexico, yeah. it's yeah. Puerto Rican. And you do that on Christmas Day? No, we're gonna we do it always a couple of days before Christmas. So this year it's the twenty second. That sounds wonderful. Can I come? Sure. <laughs> the doors <is> open. <laughs> that sounds great. What about you, Diane? So we have kind of a irreverent. Uh, family tradition that we came up with years ago. We always watch Life of Brian. Oh, <laughs> oh I I love those of you who don't know it, it's a Monty Python movie and it's based on this boy, Brian, who's who's a bastard child born in the manger next to Jesus. So it starts out, the wise men arrive and they follow the star and they come into the you know his manger with his mom and they start oh, handing so her funny. the gifts and then they realize that Brian is not the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's set back in that time and it's just it's hilarious oh it's hilarious they talk to the romans oh god it's so so funny yeah. and and they had this sermon on the mountain nobody can hear him yeah and he's going, well, blessed are the cheese makers yeah. <laughs> what is he saying you know, makers of dairy products <laughs> yeah. well i tell you it's funny you should bring it up though because when my boys were little i want we wanted to introduce them to monty python and um, and so the one I picked or I got it, you know, Blockbuster or whatever was the life of Brian. And I came home and I go, I got this great, you know, movie. And they look at it and I said, it's called The Life of Brian. And they took one look at it and Nick goes, no, no religious movies. <laughs> <laughs> I was always trying to get a little religion into them. They were they didn't trust me at all. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, no, it's not. It's not quite that. <laughs> we do have some some more traditional um, things too, because I, I do like to bake. I'm not much of a cook, but I do like to make Christmas cookies and um, the gingerbread houses. I took a cake decorating class years ago, so we, we make some pretty cool cookies and 
gingerbread. Well, you know, they look more like gingerbread trailer houses because I do them with a loaf pan. <laughs> <laughs> but then they don't collapse. Yeah. Or right. I do a loaf pan and then I cut one of the loaves like in half. So that way you kind of have sort of this offset or roof if you, you, know, you try to get it as you know, much as possible. But it's just easier. That's that way. Charming. Charming. That's charming. It doesn't fall in. <laughs> My mother actually, we made Christmas cookies that we hung on the Christmas tree. Um, which is something that I actually have in the book as well. It's called an all edible Christmas tree. But she would make these cookies. I mean, it was such a production. We'd make the cookies. They were like gingerbread men and stars and Christmas trees. Um, and you would actually put those uh, little metal hooks in the top before they were baked. And then when they were baked, you could hang them with the little metal hooks. And then you, we, we frosted them and then you had to wait for a day for the frosting to dry. And then we would paint them with uh, food coloring. And so you can see the five of us and, and none of us had any creative talent. <laughs> so most of them just sort of, sort of turned brown, you know, muddy when they put all the same colors on. But we put red hots on them and stuff. And that's how we decorated the Christmas tree. And it was wonderful. It that's was fun. So, oh, it was so much fun. I you did. We did salto ornaments, so similar, but we didn't eat them because you bake them and then glaze them. So yeah, yeah, and really, you, my brothers ate these, but they were hard as rocks. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I my dogs would like eat them all. If I tried to eat them. Oh, the dog loved them absolutely. They just had to get the little, the little metal hook out of there first. Yeah, so. <laughs> I know exactly. That's not pretty. But that was probably so nice for your mom, too, just to have all the kids there having fun together. Like, I always loved it. Oh, we loved it. It was, it was so great. It was so great. Um, and creative stuff, seeing the kids, to, yeah. you know, using their No, she was one of those moms that always had, you know, a fantastic new creative idea. I think she was just trying to keep us busy. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> probably. I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So shall we make some drinks? Sure. Yeah. Should, should we see who's here first? I see Tracy, Heather Doyle. And Heather, yeah, and, and you Heather. Have, you're here. Um, tell us what some of your holiday favorite traditions are too in the chat. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Our funniest holiday moment or <laughs> never know. Actually, it'll end up in a book. Yeah. <laughs> holiday <laughs> disaster. I know. I'll take notes. Yeah. <laughs> I missed Christmas 2019 with my family. We had planned this ski trip up to Whistler because our son was living in Vancouver, British Columbia at the time. And then the day before one of our dogs got colonitis <laughs> or col colitis, oh. <laughs> which I won't oh, go into any but it was horrible and horrifying. And I got to stay home with her and her colitis. Well, oh, what fun for you. How pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Was, yes. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> but she got better actually really quick, which almost made me mad at her because I'm like, damn it. I know you could have gone. <laughs> I actually was glad she was better. But uh, yeah. It's like, could you have not done this all like two days earlier? So yeah, I would have yeah. known you were better. Or waited I, would have been until... worried. I would have worried about her the whole time. So. Uh, the Christmas. I don't think we ever had a Christmas disaster. We had one Christmas when my oldest son was, I guess, about four, and he kept taking his clothes off. But <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of cute. <laughs> you just take them off. Is he in his birthday suit? <laughs> yep. Yes, exactly. exactly. It's like, it's not your birthday, honey. You put your clothes on. Just read your jammies back on, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, we had a year that the kids were sick, and then when we tried to go down and do Christmas with the family, like a week later, my husband ended up passing out in a restaurant, ended up in a hospital for two days. I think this is why I like Thanksgiving better. I've just had Good so, many, yes. so many little things that have happened on Christmas. You, whoa, you are snake bit. We almost got hit by a drunk driver one Christmas. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have had some good times mixed in with there too, but just there's been just a lot. But Thanksgivings are always seem to be wonderful. We, we went to um, New York when our son was in art school up there, and we went and saw the Macy's parade. That was super, super fun. Oh yeah, where we was he going? Sat on the street and everything. Well, we were kind of down a side street, so like they'd go by and you'd get about four seconds of something. So you had to like, you know, be it's quick. so yeah. cool. It's so, so cool. Yeah. That was, that was really, I think, one of our favorite. Yeah. Um, and then we yeah. went down to Atlantic City and lost our money. <laughs> <laughs> All in one fell so, 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 well, <laughs> That's traditional. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> so where was your son going to school in New York? Uh, Pratt Institute. He in was going to Pratt. Wow. Yeah. That's very impressive. Yeah. He's a digital artist now. 
Yeah, there you uh, go. In Vancouver, that's where all the movie stuff is going on up there. And so he's, he's worked for various companies up there doing special effects and stuff. So. Oh, my Lord. So anybody who hasn't watched my, the new My Little Pony, he did the he did some of the stuff in that. He did the balloons that carry the pony away. He did yeah. um, smoke. He actually has a credit on that. So if you see Ross Kelly at the end, that's my son. <laughs> I will look. I will absolutely look. Her sons have done all kinds of music stuff too. So they've got even more credits. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of credits between the two of them. So. But we, yeah, both my kids have, have taken, you know, done creative routes. And yeah. I credit their wonderful mother. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you want me to make this thing? Yeah. yeah so, ready. yeah. So tell us. So let me you. just explain to the ladies watching. I'm assuming they're ladies. Um, the ingredients that uh, Diane and Melissa put up uh are for a full, you know, a full six to 12 servings, I think. So I'm just going to make a half of that, but I will, you know, you, if you go back to that post, you'll see the, the directions for the full. Um, so, but they're so easy. The beauty of this thing is that it involves no cooking. It's all pantry items that you have probably, um, I mean, on the assumption that you have a huge bottle of Mount Gay rum in your pan. <laughs> of course. What? I mean, <laughs> what right, okay, so that's a given. Um, and then some of these, you know, uh, we've got condensed, sweetened oh. condensed milk, you can get that anywhere. Uh, we've got evaporated oh. milk, you can get it anywhere. Um, now the, the two things that make these so oh. yummy course uh, is coconut cream which is different from coconut milk coconut milk is milky coconut cream is almost solid I think. Uh, and you can get both of these at trader joe's you can get any of these things at trader you can get the wrong <laughs> coconut milk even though your instructions specifically said coconut cream <laughs> okay. Well, well just, just okay. We'll so so it's rummy. So we're good. <laughs> we'll just double up on the rum, and then we won't care that it's milk and <laughs> Well, next time you'll know. Okay. Um, but and coconut cream and coconut milk, you can get pretty much any grocery store in the international aisle, as they like to call it. Um, so it's a very very simple procedure. You just pour a can of each one of the four of these things into a blender. Um, so the first thing I'm going to put in is half a can of sweetened condensed milk. Half a can, you said? That's what I'm going to do, because I'm just making half the recipe. Okay. Um, so you just whoop that in. And you whoop, might be whoop. Whoop. Did you say whoop? Is that a technical term now? Whoop! <laughs> We have to turn for pouring this goopy stuff in. Okay. Um, I have fat free sweetened condensed milk. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I have that, obviously. Fat <laughs> free. Uh. And then you put your can in the recycling for later so you can wash it out and recycle it. Okay. All, All right. right. Do we got that? Did we do that, girls? <laughs> yes, we're good. We're good? All right. Now here comes the coconut cream, which is you know, oh. so that's okay. Let me just get the stuff. Um, <laughs> next time, get coconut cream. And how much do we need? It's a half a half a can for us, a full can for the full thing. So we should just do that. Oh, so to it all. Are you making it Where's up? Where's that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, said we use half the can. You said? Yeah. So just use. The I'm just using half. So, so it's it's a separate. So we're just going to use the chunky oh. top part, the creamy part. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. So that's we'll kind of like works. cream and not, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, we're in. Then, in. I'm putting in a half a can of the evaporated milk, but the recipe calls, if you're doing the full thing, a full can. So here's my half can. And exact measurement is the key, right? Yeah, right. Just throw it all in there, more or less. That's, <laughs> that's my, my approach. Yeah, good enough is my approach. Got it. And then finally, a can or a half can, depending on how much you're making, of the coconut milk. Now, sometimes you'll find when you open up coconut milk that there's a sort of 
hard uh, topping to it, which is really the coconut cream on top of the coconut milk. And you just break that up and pour that in as well. So that goes in. And that, believe it or not, is basically it. Then you're going to put in, if you're making the full recipe, two, two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, wait, slow down. Yeah, yeah we're not right there yet. Right. So wait, let's go back. Half a can, half a can of regular coconut milk. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you have to sort of break that stuff up at the top, right? Okay. Well, I guess I'm making curry tomorrow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That'll be good. Okay. All right. Coconut. We're coming. Then we're good. Okay, now, then, now it's. So we you did all four cans, right? All four things. Yes. Right, so we did sweetened condensed milk, cream of coconut or coconut cream, evaporated milk, and coconut milk. All right, okay. so we put that in. We ready? Ready yep. for the next step? This is very, this is very tricky. One, te one teaspoon, or if you're making the full recipe, two teaspoons, but we're making half. One teaspoon two half of teaspoon. vanilla. Mm -hmm. okay. What vanilla do you normally use? Do you have a particular kind you like? You know, I normally use, what's the one that you always use? What have you got there? It's the one that we always use. McCormick, is it? Oh, yeah. I have a... Uh, she's got Watkins. Yeah. But I've discovered this um, Trader Joe's Organic Alcohol Free that I like. Yeah, very they didn't have it last time I was there. They were all really? out yeah. Well, I like Mexican vanilla. I, I used to have a boss years ago and she would bake a lot of stuff and bring it in. She always used Mexican vanilla. It almost has a hint of like cinnamon in it. Ooh. And so I've gotten like wherever I can find those. I don't have a particular brand of Mexican vanilla that I'm loyal to, but I, if I can find it, I always try to use that. I wow. Had that at one I did not know about that. I need to find that. And then it's, you know, it's your standard uh, cinnamon and nutmeg. And I like, for the half recipe, I like about a quarter teaspoon. Of cinnamon? Of both, of each. Um, and I think that the full recipe calls for a half. Okay. Um, now, if there is, you can make this with a, with an actual, um, mm -hmm. what do they call it, cinnamon stick. But if you do that, what you're going to have to do is once you've mixed all this together, you put it into a pan and you bring it all to a simmer and you put this in and you just let it simmer. Well, you bring it to a simmer, then you turn off the heat and let it steep for about a half an hour. I don't have the patience. <laughs> I, just, I love the way nutmeg smells. Yeah. Although I do, I do like actually having a little stir stick when you actually drink it. I think that's very important. Um, so that's it. So you've got all of that in here. Now what I'm going to do, do not put the rum in yet. That's the important thing. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this into my kitchen. Um, and it takes, you really should run it for on a pretty high speed for about a minute. If you were doing the whole recipe, I would do it for two minutes to really get that coconut cream mixed in there. So I'm going to let you two chat while I take it into the kitchen so that you... <laughs> yeah, we don't have this. We go I'm gonna do a little dance. Yeah, so we'll turn off our microphone. <laughs> we don't have the we don't have the right either. So, all right. right. Anyway, I'll meet it's you back. Dance. There you go. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna mute for just of what Thanksgiving seconds. means to me. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're, we're back. <laughs> I shouldn't bow because everyone can tell my roots need touch up. <laughs> you just keep my head tilted back. <laughs> Put my hat back on. Ooh, that's pretty frosty. Ooh, that's good. That's 
coconutty. Smells good. Coconutty, coconutty. Yeah. If you put the nutmeg in the coconut and shake it all up. Oh, yeah. Like we need to do the <laughs> walk around <laughs> yeah. the island, right? Yeah. With the shaker. Yeah. <laughs> like in uh, Practical Magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or Beetlejuice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many oh, y'all are making like this? Comment if you're making this as we speak. <laughs> okay. Oh, so let's take a moment here and look at our comments, though, first of all. So Tracy, hey, Tracy, says favorite family tradition, making Hungarian kiffles with the family. Funniest, uh, what's a kiffle, Tracy? Do you know what that is? No idea. <laughs> Funniest memories, the daughter getting Teddy Ruxpin. And do you know what that is? It's a talking bear, I think. Wasn't it the one that you saw the commercials for? The okay, and freaking bleep. Oh, <laughs> when she started talking. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Prices. Okay. I have to look that up. And Heather says, favorite tradition making pizzelles. Is that how you said that? Pizzelles? Pizzelles? Oh, yeah. Pizzelles. Like little I think. cookies, right? Pizzelles. Oh, pizzelle. Pizzelle? Yeah. Pizzelle. Yeah. With Hershey yeah, bars in the yeah. middle. Best memory mm, yeah. of seeing oh. her daughter's face every Christmas morning. Oh. Oh. oh, there's Cecilia. Hey, Cecilia. And then Tracy. Sorry. Oh. Do you need to? She's wetting her pants. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Kiffle is a, a mini nut roll. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Oh. Good. All right. Carry on, Amy. Okay. So, what you may see when you do this, what you will see is there's a kind of foaminess to the top yeah um, which is fine and it's it's really you know it's it's very intensely coconut creamy um i don't find it very pretty <laughs> so <laughs> if, like here <laughs> if you don't find it pretty and you don't want it in your cup you can you know skim it off with a uh with it just a spoon and skim it into a, a bowl but this is what i do i get a pretty pitcher and I get a strainer. Oh, okay. Melissa has everything in her kitchen. It's okay if you don't strain it. It's it's absolutely fine. The stuff is delicious. It just looks down so everyone can see us see strain. And then strain. I just I just pour it through. Okay. Straining. Oh, but it kind of um like reconstitutes it. Like yes, exactly. Yeah. If that's the word, I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> but yeah, it kind of changes the texture of the bag too. Huh. And I have to save it because Bill loves it. So I have to save it and put it in the fridge to add to his. Because what do men know about presentation? Nothing. They know nothing. <laughs> so there, and then you have this lovely, nice, that's not so lovely. This lovely, nice, creamy. You have a lot. Yeah. That's great. Now here, here comes now this recipe. I called for one to two cups of rum for the whole recipe. I use half of that would be one half to one cup of rum. And I put in a quarter cup and it was more than enough for me. So, but I'm just, you know, it's to taste whatever you like. Anyway. I'm Irish, so I'll use the whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Or you can use the whole bottle Do you um, want to, use the coconut rum? to yeah. taste. Okay. So I just, and dark rum like Mount Gay is traditional, but white rum is fine. And actually it's eggnog. You can put anything in it. You want to put brandy in it, put brandy in it. You know, yeah. the point is just to have fun. Cheap rum works too. <laughs> That's absolutely. There's no point in using great rum. This okay. is coconut rum. So we're going to. Uh, okay. Okay. Five cups. Is that what you said? <laughs> You stir that up. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this. Uh, you like you can put it in the you're fridge. Gonna, you're going to have the other one. Sorry, go ahead. How hard is this, girls? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I confess I'm, I only like coconut milk and curry, and I'm not a huge rum fan. So I don't actually have high hopes for this for myself. Yeah, that means that's, that's that's my husband's outside waiting with bated breath. So. Yeah, I know. I know. Mine too. I tell you, they love this stuff. Okay. Um, so you can you can put it in the fridge and, and let it fill. Um, but this is also great on the rocks. So what I do is I get my, I like to have it 
in a pretty little wine glass because as they say, the presentation is everything. So I put a couple of ice cubes in. I pour a little eggnog over that. Look how pretty. And then if you want just a little bit of, you know. I'm giving my husband the non-pretty wine glass so he doesn't break it. <laughs> and then just as garnish, you can do that. What is that? What do you have with garnish? The the um, cinnamon stick. The cinnamon stick. Oh, oh okay. okay. All right. Except the cinnamon stick is not big enough. But at any rate, I don't know if people can see it, but it's really very pretty. Oh wow! <laughs> what do you think, Diane? Good. This is good. <laughs> It's kind of like a milkshake with rum in it, like a yeah. coconut milkshake. Actually, yeah. I like what's going on. Me gusta mucho la bebida de Puerto Rico. <laughs> I, 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 I don't really like coconut or rum, but it's I like it. It doesn't it's taste like it's not good. Mm -hmm. Even with the I probably use a little bit more rum, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm getting a taste for it. Ooh, I like this. This is good. Mm. This is, I'm going to make this. Yeah. Well, you know what's nice about it is if you have these things in your pantry, people show up anytime during the holidays and you go, oh, let me make you a special eggnog. And they think you're brilliant, you know, <laughs> and it's just all there, ready to go. Carlos's mm -hmm. discerning palate proclaim this to taste like a root beer float. <laughs> it's an adult version of a root beer float. Did it anybody else make it? Anybody else have a commentary? Really, it's it's oh. just melted ice cream. Really, Tracy says it tastes like a pas pastry cookie. Think mini nut roll. Is oh, that that's like about this kiffle. Or the pizzelle. The, no, the kiffle. Oh, the kiffle. Oh, the kiffle. Oh, okay. I think pizzelle. Don't think. I think they're that they're, they're made with like a little sort of waffle irony thing. Am I right? right. The pizzelle, I think, but not the kiffle. Am I making that up? No, I sure. think you're right. Yeah, I think I'm making it up, but that's my impression. <laughs> Come say so at any rate, there we go. Coquitos. Raise your hand if you want Carlos to come say hello. He's dying to. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just dying to. Look, there's a picture here. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go. Gotta like go. A, this, is, this is like a Riviera float. <laughs> this is super good. Runners. This is super, super good. Yeah, it yeah. was easy. Yeah, not having to cook it or. Yeah. Um, and you can make traditional eggnog and you can cook it. And, and I've done that and it's delicious as well. But this is so simple, so fast. Um, and it's very coconutty, which I love. Yeah. Well, again, it's not, um, I'm trying to, it's, it doesn't quite, it's not quite as custardy as. No, it's not. Food. It's not, it's not that super thick uh, eggnoggy. Which I always, I always liked that too, but like I would be the only one that would drink the eggnog. Yeah. And I was always surprised by that because I thought I don't like it because it's kind of like, you know, custody pudding. Keep going. No, that's good. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, my oldest son and I are the only ones that like eggnog and now he doesn't like it anymore and I can't have dairy anymore really. So, mm. so now. That it's, is so it's, sad it's, and tragic. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you how many uh times i've put up on various you know facebook pages um you know eggnog yay or nay the question oh my goodness i mean you know <laughs> there's like two kinds of people in this world people who like eggnog and people who don't it's just it's like guacamole too or avocado people some some people can't stand the texture so maybe it's a texture thing with eggnog seriously like, who doesn't like eggnog tell us why tell us why you're crazy <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a disgusting question. <laughs> Maybe it's like the thickness of it. Like, it makes me gag. Nice. <laughs> Did somebody say that? Someone said that? <laughs> we need to move our things up. Did someone say that? It makes him gag? No, no, no. Oh, I no. Was <laughs> like, Tracy, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was me. That was me. <laughs> okay, this is pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. So shall we start another cocktail? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What time is it? I have 42. 42, something All like right. that. 
Yeah. And we're going to do a reading at the end, right? You're going to do a reading from the book for us? If we have time, absolutely. Yeah. I'm happy to. All right. Well, I think both of ours are super duper. Yeah, mine's just quick. pouring things in with yeah. very little. All right. So you can't open which one are we doing first? Uh, okay, we'll do the sparkling peppermint swirl. Can you well, open I don't have the stuff for that. that. I'm going to come in. I have the stuff for the points. Okay. All right. So first, I'm going to beat my... Uh, peppermints, my mints. I saved this so we can take some of this. Okay. They're really old from Diane's cupboard, so they're not actually. <laughs> they might be kind of chewy. <laughs> hmm. I think I had them from the year that I was supposed to go with the family, and I couldn't go. Left over. But the shelf life of a peppermint is like eight years. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. We're going to go with it. All right. So it's super easy. Hang on. I got to figure out how to line my cup here. Oh. Why we are not running a cooking show because we're not really yeah, the ones of the champagne to organize. They're using champagne or prosecco or cava, real champagne. Uh, barefoot bubbly. Oh, that's 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 a great idea. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, that's why we marry those guys. That's one of the jobs they are doing. Stuff. <laughs> Although usually, I always want to take the bugs out. <laughs> First because I tell mine to kill them and he <laughs> takes them outside. <laughs> All right. Okay. So while she's trying to do that, <laughs> I was at the liquor store today. So I bought vanilla vodka. This is an ounce and a half of vanilla vodka. And I think we're just making, I don't know if we're making one <laughs> serving or. Oh <my> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the crap out of me. Okay. Did you, Did make you break the overhead line? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, an ounce of cream de menthe. My heart's like, bitch. You're gonna like put a hole in your roof or something? <laughs> it's so hard. Okay, I'll send you the bill. Oh, this is great. This is like Nyquil. Nyquil. <laughs> Nyquil. I don't. Okay. If you don't have creme de menthe, you can use NyQuil. That's <laughs> great. That great works. And Reasonable drink. substitution. Okay, a splash of grenadine, but the drink's supposed to be red, so I don't know how that's that going to work. Okay, and then two and a half ounces of the sparkling wine, or in this case, champagne. So that was one and a half. Two. We turn this here more on the screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here we go. She's got the oh, fancy cocktail shaker from Walmart. It is yeah. so cute. It leaks, but it works. How does it leak? So you just have to kind of look okay. the side. And yeah, this is supposed to be red, so I don't know. Does cream de menthe come in? Cream here? works. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think about had cream de menthe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe this particular brand just is green for. It's the only one they had. For fun. Right, here we go. Well, that was super easy. Let's see how it tastes. <laughs> I like the um, <laughs> cheers. I like the uh, candy cane accent, kind of like a margarita with the salt. I just love the glasses. Hmm. You feel so sophisticated when you drink out of those glasses. I like your eggnog better. Really? Mm -hmm. This it's is like a good thing for the end of the night to wake you back up. But I love peppermint. I just didn't have all the stuff. Well, I'm going to make that, and I'll let you all know what I think. I don't know. Okay, here. Let's try. Let's try it. I don't know. Is it's, it NyQuil, Greek? Yeah, it kind of tastes like NyQuil. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very pepperminty. Like, if you like um, that rumple, not rumple still skin, what's it called? Uh, rumple mints? <laughs> rump, uh, oh. <laughs> There's a liqueur. Away from I think it's called rumple mints. Am I wrong about that? Rumple mints? I don't know. So my husband ordered it one time at a at a bar, and it was like kind of like a little thing of it, and it was like so pepperminty. It was like it's like drinking an Altoid. 
I think I would like that. I think I would like that a lot. <laughs> this is this is not that that peppermint. It's it's cranked down. I think this is the wrong cream de mint though, because the drink is supposed to be red. It is, but I thought cream de mint was always green. I don't know, because the picture is red. Are you supposed? Maybe you're supposed to swirl it and not shake it. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I just because, it. No, because it's a whole ounce. I don't know. I would say this is a cocktail fail. Oh, I don't believe it. We're up, Diane. Oh, well. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Okay, so mine is super, super easy, too. So this <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, Diane. I'm going to get my Prosecco. Okay. <laughs> this one's super easy since I am, I am not much of a... Cook or bartender. Well, the bartending is fun. Okay, now we'll see if I can do the same. This oh, always makes these cute little. It always makes me so um, nervous. These these cute little shot glasses that my son got for our husband. They look like little beakers because my my husband. Oh, very cute. So I had to learn when I pulled these out. I thought, oh, those would be cute. I'll use those, but these have milliliters, and I'm like, well, how do I translate that to whatever our system is called, the ounces? And like 29.57 ounces, uh, 29.57 milliliters equals one ounce. So that's right around 30. So I, if you're, if you have happen to have something that's in milliliters, about 30 milliliters. Equals one. Woo! That's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've got no, mine open. Now I just, I have to get what, what was the other, was it, um, Grant, what was the, uh, so you liquor? need, uh, Corboisier. No, not Corboisier. Oh, no, orange liqueur. Orange liqueur, cranberry right. juice, and champagne. And okay. then you garnish it. Go get that. So super okay. easy. And Carol is here. Hey, Carol. And she says, I'm jealous. Somebody yeah. stole my shine knob. Oh, man. Oh, I'm confiscating <laughs> every electronic device in my house until my knob is returned. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to hold it, hold it hostage. That's so. right. Okay. So you want half an ounce of orange liqueur. So we've got triple sec orange liqueur. So half an ounce of that. Contro probably isn't Contro orange liqueur too, and then Aperol also. I do want one of these, Carlos. What are you making? I'm making uh, poinsettias. The orange liqueur cranberry sparkling wine cocktail. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so half so half an ounce would be 15 milliliters. I'm having to do math here after drinking eggnog. Not easy. Okay, I'm ready. So what did you do? What did I miss? Um, so I'm just pouring it in the glasses directly. Like so it's half an ounce? orange liqueur, um, half an ounce. Okay. Oh, directly into the glass. Oh, so you don't use a shaker. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't use a shaker. So I'm using uh, Cointreau. Fancy. Okay. No, it's, uh, cheap it's stuff. a thousand years old. I mean, we. I think when my son got married, we gave him and his fiance a uh, cocktail party, and they live in Singapore. So I had, I thought I had to make Singapore slings. So I bought all of these fancy liqueurs for making the Singapore slings, um, and and I mixed them all up, and I've never used them yet. And the worst part was, after I did all this, and it was oh, it was endless. Um, my husband said, you know, I really like this drink. It tastes just like, what do you call it? Fruit punch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, darling. Yeah. Thank you. It's like you can just make fruit punch. <laughs> so what do I put in after the, after the orange liqueur? Okay. So then we're moving on to cr the cranberry juice. You want three ounces of cranberry juice. Okay. Now, is yours sweetened cranberry juice or not? Uh, it's just 100% cranberry juice. Okay. That's what I have, too. Yeah, I don't usually like the real, real, uh, no. Is there another kind to get that's sweeter? There's some that has, like, you know, corn syrup. There's there. some that are sweetened and some are mixed with other sweeter juices to make it a little sweeter. Oh, I usually... I don't buy it often, but usually I would get cran apple rather than just straight. Yeah, like that, cran apple. Mm -hmm. um, I maybe should have mixed this in something else because I think we're going to fill these glasses to the brim. <laughs> well, that's 
it's way yeah. more festive than, than the green NyQuil. Okay, so you three ounces of that, and then you do three ounces of champagne. Oh, should I get? Should I just get wine glasses? And switch them. Yeah, that might be better because I'm not because otherwise we're gonna be right up to the brim. So yeah, I measured out on my thing. Yeah, we are, it only takes five. six ounces a regular uh, champagne glass. Only takes six ounces, so I made it a little bit smaller. Yeah, so to fit in a flute, you probably want to cut this. Yeah, I would go two, two, and two, or half two and two. We're just going to see if we can get out every glass in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then three ounces of uh, champagne. Whoop. I always really like mimosas in the morning. Oh, yeah. Or anytime. Hey, y'all. So we have Amanda who's joined us. Hey, Amanda and Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. Hi. And yeah, Carol agrees that we need bigger glasses. I'm glad that Jen. I'm glad people are joining us. Come here and their husband. Their husband <laughs> You're afraid. He's afraid to come in. <laughs> Your husband? He's afraid to come in. Oh, we're scary. <laughs> this is a scary group of people. I know. Ladies drinking. <laughs> Tell him if he doesn't come in, we're going to start talking about talking about men. Uh-huh. That's what he's afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> Do we put ice in these? Or no? Um I guess we could put ice, but I think you know if, if the champagne is already cold and the um, oh. cranberry juice is already cold. And then for garnish, you uh, go to the cannabis store. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? I said go to the cannabis store. I was just kidding. It's rosemary. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Rosemary. I have a sprig of rosemary. I can't a sprig of rosemary. They put a sprig of rosemary in there. This this is just garnish so that when you go to drink it, it can poke you in the eye. <laughs> and then some fre uh, fresh cranberries. Nice for um extra little. To make it to make it look artistic, and there you okay. go. Cheers! Cheers! Oh, where'd she go? It's bubbling. And... This is going to be so pretty. <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, oh and it makes it buzz up too. Hmm. Yeah, that's that is good. It's kind of like having a pine tree in your drink. <laughs> like it smells like sort of a I know Christmas that's flavor or Christmas oh, tree Christmas aroma. Exactly. But no, it's true. Oh, yeah. that's delicious. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's this would be a good uh, if you're doing like a Christmas brunch, I think. This yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, My daughter's already requested a boozy Christmas morning. And <laughs> <laughs> mimosas, but maybe we'll make these. <laughs> I'm going to put an ice cube in mine because I'm just an infidel. What can I say? Ooh, and you get more fuzzies. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so did anybody make any of these while we were going along? What did you think? I kind of like the smell of this rosemary with this. Yeah. Mm. That is delicious. I love that. Yeah, you know what? I think you're right because it's swirled. See, I didn't read my directions. <laughs> I think you're supposed to oh, swirl so like <laughs> into my on top. Oh, that would make a lot more sense. Well, didn't it say swirl in the name? Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's what they meant by squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> and just, we want to remind everyone, we are not professional bartenders. <laughs> mixologists. Yeah, we are. We get it in our kitchen. <laughs> we are not mixologists. Learn learn from our mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> do as we say, not as we do. All I right. Um, are you going to regale us with a reading from An Eggnog to Die For? I could certainly do that. I decided not to read about the part where she finds the dead Santa because we're having a, a cheerful thing. So I thought I'd start with um, something from the beginning of the book, um, which is basically poses the question, should a grown man ever wear an elf costume? I think we all know the answer to the book, but, but just stay with me. Um, so, what is happening here is that there is uh, 
Sam and her friends are out for dinner. Sam is doing a, a restaurant review and they're all eating stuff. And uh, Sam's friend Jenny is telling her about something called the, San the Fair Harbor Santa Celebration, uh, which the town is putting together to get a little tourist money in the week or so before Christmas. Uh, and so I'm just gonna sort of jump into the middle of a scene, but Jenny's explaining how this is all going to work. And they're going to have a, a town Santa Claus. And Jenny says, Santa is always played by someone from the select board. That's the town board. They rotate. Last year it was Monique Holden. She was terrific, very jolly. That's going to be a tough act for Caleb Mayo to follow. On the other hand, he'll be the first Santa to arrive at Town Cove by boat. I like that, I said, imagining a red, an I is Sam. The, the books are written in the first person. I like that, I said, imagining a red suited Father Christmas chugging in at the helm of a fishing boat to the delighted cheers of the Fair Harbor citizenry. Uh, I'm not sure you will, actually, Jenny said, her blue eyes dancing with mischief. I groaned, Jenny in a mischievous mood is not someone I trust. The boat is going to be the Harbor, Harbor Patrol's Grady White, she continued. The Grady White is the Harbor Patrol's main power boat. I know this because my gentleman friend, as my Aunt Ida would have called him, is Jason Captiva, the town's harbor master. Why wouldn't I like that? Well, the Grady White is going to be piloted by Jason, Jenny said, and left a significant pause. I stepped right into her trap. That's fine. How is that a problem? It will be piloted by Jason, wearing an elf costume, Jenny said gleefully, an elf costume with red striped stockings and curly toed shoes. <laughs> Jason in an elf costume. That would not be fine. That would be something I could never unsee. Jason was hot to death, but even he could not pull off red striped stockings and curly toed shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll jump forward a little bit um, to the actual scene. At first, all seemed to be going well at Santa's seashore. Santa's seashore celebration. We should not, we should not have had the drinky poos before. Okay. Santa's seashore celebration. It was the Saturday, a week before Christmas, and although a cold northern front had moved over the Cape overnight, the sun was shining. On the Cape in winter, that is reason enough for high spirits. Precisely at 10 o'clock, I pulled my ancient and very cranky pickup truck, Grumpy, into the municipal lot at the town cove, which shone blue and silver in its cradle of winter bleached marshes. A crowd was already forming down by the pier with what seemed like hundreds of screaming kids working themselves up to a fever pitch of excitement. This made me nervous. Am I the only one who thinks children en masse are kind of scary? Also, it seemed that everyone was sporting a Santa hat except me. This made me feel like Scrooge, but I wasn't willing to add another four inches to my already considerable height. Sam stands six foot one inch in her stocking feet. I got out of the truck and scanned the crowd for Jenny and her boys, thing one, thing two, and thing three. For the record, their names are Ethan, Eli, and Evan, and they are 10, eight, and six years old, respectively. I finally managed to spot Roland, that's Jenny's husband, who, despite the crowd's preference for holiday headgear, was wearing his usual hideous yellow and black checked wool cap with the ear flaps tied securely under his chin. Not for Roland Singleton to choose fun over comfort, and yet Jenny loved him. I pushed through the crowd and enjoyed a series of high fives with the three things. Suddenly the crowd began to cheer and I turned back toward the water. Coming around the curve from the narrow, rid reamed estuary that leads into Town Cove from Crystal Bay was the Harbor Patrol's Grady White, with Santa Claus standing in the bow, resplendent in his plush red suit and an enormous white polyester beard. As the boat nosed its way up to the dock, he waved one white-gloved hand, and the kids in the crowd went wild. 
all except Evan Singleton. I like this kid a lot. He is serious and thoughtful and seems much wiser than his six years. Also, he has no filter. He says whatever he is thinking. While his brothers rushed forward to catch one of the candy canes that Santa was now tossing to his adoring fans, Evan stepped back, surveying the scene solemnly. There was a temporary hush when Santa raised his hand for silence, presumably so the crowd could hear him ask the obligatory, have you been good boys and girls? But before he could say his line, Evan took the opportunity to pipe up high and clear. Santa Claus has a nose like a potato. Awkward. <laughs> Santa Claus did indeed have a nose like a potato, large and bulbous and kind of mashed in on one side. But I didn't have much time to absorb that fact before my eyes were drawn to something even more disturbing. Jason at the wheel of the Brady White. Not the tall, dark, and handsome Jason I knew and usually hoped to know even better. No, this was Jason in an elf costume with red and white striped stockings and green shoes that turned up at the toes. I had been right about the buzzkill effect of this getup. The sight would be forever burned into my retinas unless I did something fast. I turned to Jenny. Get me out of here, I commanded. I need a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. no, it seemed appropriate <laughs> i keep picturing the santa having instead of a bag like having a net like you know for fish oh that would be good oh, santa yeah. with a fishing net over his back yes and if his nose is like a potato you know in the in the, the poem where they say lying of, laying a finger aside of his nose up the chimney he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes. <laughs> that was one of our traditions my father read that to us every christmas eve oh uh, yeah Oh, that's a good one. Anyway. Well, Very thank sweet. you so much for joining us, Amy. This was so fun. Yeah, and I can't wait to read the book. Oh, I hope you enjoy it. I yeah, really get do. It's all the mood for the holidays. Yeah. It's great fun to write. I, you know, you wonder, you think about, oops, it's time to go, ladies. <laughs> At any rate, I hope you all enjoy it. And it was so sweet of you to have me here and so sweet to have everybody online with us. And I really, really appreciate it. Oh, you made awesome. my launch day even more exciting. Yay. Yay. And you converted me to coconut milk and rum. Yeah. Oh, no. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Cheers. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. To all and to all a good night. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Up the chimney we go. <laughs> Bye, y'all.